Welcome. Today we're going to talk about reefing, and if you're unfamiliar with what reefing a mainsail is, it's simply the process of reducing sail area when the boat becomes overpowered, if the winds become too strong, or sometimes if you're sailing with an inexperienced crew. Some clear signs that let you know when it may be time to reef are when you're experiencing severe weather helm or excessive heel. In other words, if the thought of reefing even crosses your mind, you probably should already be reefed. We've broken up this video into three chapters, if you will. First, we're going to prepare, then execute, and finally clean up. So let's get right into the preparation of reefing. We've broken prepare up into three basic steps. First, we're going to assess the situation, then we're going to steer the boat on the proper course, and then we're going to begin derigging our mainsail to get ready to reef. The first step in preparation is assessing the situation. Before we do anything, we want to know what's going on around us, what the weather's doing, traffic, etc. Know the local weather forecast, look around and see if other boats are reefed, and know your crew's ability. Now that we've determined conditions warrant a reef in the mainsail, we need to steer the boat on a close reach point of sail and left the main. First, bring the boat up to a close reach point of sail, making sure you have adequate sea room and are clear of traffic. Maintaining your course, ease out the mainsail completely to a full luff. The beauty of sailing on a close reach is it enables you to luff the main completely, fully depowering the sail while maintaining way sailing under jib alone. If you're sailing with an inexperienced crew, have them steer the boat while you put in the reef. Instruct your crew to check for traffic, but remember, you're still the skipper and you're still in charge of the boat. If possible, choose a landmark that your crew can steer towards. Once you're comfortable with the situation, it's time to move on to step three of preparation, getting the mainsail ready. Overhaul the main halyard and add a couple of wraps if necessary. Uncleat the halyard and hand the line to your crew. To avoid shouting and yelling on your boat, it is always a good idea to establish some basic hand signals to communicate. Now work your way carefully to the mast and ease the boom vane. The boom vane needs to be completely slack to allow the boom to rise as you reef the mainsail. When the mainsail is reefed, we no longer have a need for the Cunningham, so we can go ahead and de-rig and store it. Ease the outhaul slightly to make the mainsail easier to raise and lower. At this point, your boat and crew are prepared and ready to execute a reef. We have assessed the situation, we are steering our proper course, and we have de-rigged the mainsail. Moving into execution, you have three more steps. You're going to lower the tack, raise the head, and secure the clue. Step one of execution, we need to lower and secure the tack. Instruct your crew to ease the main halyard. As you lower the sail, be sure the bolt rope comes out of the slot in the mast. Secure the reef cringle appropriately, making sure not to poke a hole in the sail. With your tack secured, you will now need to raise the head back up. Cleat the main halyard and add several wraps to your winch. Grind the main halyard nice and tight. The key to a properly reefed mainsail is everything needs to be extremely tight, creating a nice flat sail. These vertical wrinkles radiating out from the tack are a good indicator that your luff is tight enough. The third and final step of execution is to tighten our clue. If your boat is equipped with multiple reef lines, use the second reef line to raise the boom to the level of the first reef cringle. This will take the vertical load off of the first reef line so we can get this first reef line extra tight. Again, look for a nice deep crease forming in the foot of the mainsail to indicate your reef line is getting tight. If you use the second reef line to raise the boom, don't forget to release it to lower the boom back down. With your reef line nice and tight, go ahead and cleat it off. The last thing you want is for your reef line to come undone while you're out sailing. On our J24, this cleat has a tendency to come loose, so we're securing a slip knot as a preventative measure. If the cleat does fail, the slip knot will catch and hold. Remember to check for traffic 360 degrees throughout the entire procedure. So now we've successfully executed a reef in the mainsail, 
by securing each of the three corners of the sail, the tack, the head, and the clue. All we have left to do now is a little bit of cleanup. We're gonna store our lines, sheet back in the main sail, get back sailing, and we're gonna finish up this video with a few notes about safety. With our reef executed, take a minute and clean up any excess line laying around the deck. A lark's head is an excellent way to store line. Tighten and adjust the boom vane for the conditions you'll be sailing in. All we have left to do is to sheet in the mainsail and go sailing. As a final note, always keep in mind safety first. Although it can be a very fun and rewarding experience to sail in high winds, it is easy for anybody to overestimate their abilities. If you feel like you are pushing your limits at any time, don't be afraid to turn around and head back in. There's always another day. For a quick recap on how to put a reef into a mainsail, we first prepared by assessing the situation, steering the boat on a close reach course, and de-rigging our mainsail. We then executed the reef by lowering and securing the tack, raising the head back up, then we secured and tightened the clue. To wrap things up, we just did a little bit of cleanup by storing our lines using lark's heads, we sheeted in the mainsail and got back to sailing, and we're keeping in mind that safety always comes first and constantly observing the conditions.